Is that a monkey? After re-establishing Godzilla for the modern era, Legendary Pictures were able to get their hands on another iconic monster in King Kong. The history of the Kong movies is actually kind of odd to me, especially when compared to Godzilla. Whereas Godzilla had 30 plus movies, all ranging in a variety of serious movies to absolutely bonkers off the wall movies, the Kong movies are much more limited with, I guess, more of a prestigious status. Obviously, the original 1930s King Kong movie was a groundbreaking film, and with its interesting story giving a commentary on humanity's desire to control and profit off of everything, and also turning its monster into a full-fledged character that we sympathize for despite the destruction that he causes, it went on to inspire countless filmmakers and storytellers, movie makers, special effects artists. It's just one of those films that stands the test of time, and it's kind of crazy to think that it's almost about to be 100 years old. But after that film, a lot of the subsequent Kong movies were usually just remakes of the same story, like with the 70s version or the 2005 Peter Jackson version, which I think is a great film for sure, and it expands on the concepts of the original, but it still follows the same story structure. The only different Kong movies that we had were the sequel to the 70s version that nobody remembers or talks about, although it did give us our first and only Lady Kong, so far at least, come on Monsterverse. And of course, the Japanese Toho King Kong Escapes that gave us our only Mecha King Kong. Again, so far, come on Legendary. But with this, my favorite aspect of the Legendary Pictures Kong movie is that it is completely different than anything that we've ever seen before, and gave us a brand new introduction and tone for the giant ape as well as making him bigger and more powerful than ever because this wasn't just to make a Kong movie, this was to eventually lead to a shared universe where we would have a modern day Godzilla vs. Kong film, which they absolutely succeeded in. And I know shared universe stuff in film may seem played out or like it's copying the Marvel formula, but if you want to get technical, the Toho Godzilla movies were a shared universe long before Marvel movies were a thing. And considering Legendary are making giant kaiju movies, well, they started it, so it's only fair they take it back. But although the 2014 Godzilla movie started the MonsterVerse, the complaints of that film were heard, and I honestly think a lot of Kong Skull Island were in response to that. Because this movie is heavy on the monster scenes and action sequences and really starts to dive into high fantasy stuff when it comes to this world's lore and the physics of the battle scenes, which seems to be something that all the following MonsterVerse films have followed suit in and taken to even more extreme levels. But this movie in particular is also not dependent on any of the preceding or following films. It completely stands on its own as its own isolated adventure story. The film takes place in the 1970s, shortly after the Vietnam War, and director Jordan Vogt Roberts, he gave the entire look and feel of this movie as if he was filming a war movie, taking inspirations from films like Apocalypse Now or Full Metal Jacket, but then simply just sticking a giant ape in the middle of all of it. The premise revolves around a group of scientists and soldiers and an early iteration of the monarch organization that discover an island that has been shrouded in a strange fog, hiding it for some time. A crew is assembled to get to the island and explore it, but no sooner do they arrive in their helicopters does Kong show up and start to knock them out of the sky in a really exciting and fun sequence showing the full scale and size of the creature and just leaves them stranded on the island full of weird giant monsters looking to devour them as they struggle to survive and also find a way off of the island. This is just classic monster movie stuff, but done within the freedom of a high-budget Hollywood picture. A lot of the creatures on the island have really cool and interesting designs, and even terrifying ones as well. And there's lots of soldiers here so that we can have a high body count. One of the best kills is when this giant spider thing kind of comes out of nowhere, a guy looks up and the leg of the spider lands right down his throat, killing him. Obviously, it's off the walls, bonkers kind of stuff, but it's a lot of fun. What helps too is that a lot of this movie was actually filmed in the jungles near Vietnam, so it's not like it's a bunch of actors just in front of a green screen. You can actually feel like they are exploring an island because... They are. The jungle is real around them, and that makes all the difference in a film like this. It's an important difference between this and a lot of the other big Hollywood films that just have actors standing in front of a green screen where everything looks completely fake. 
The downside may be that this movie might be a little too silly for some people with its concepts, although I do feel like it always keeps the threats real and the stakes high, and characters that you don't expect to die actually do, which is a nice touch in something like this. And its cast of characters is going to be hit or miss with some people. Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson are two of the leads of this movie, and I feel like the film tries to maybe hit like a Rick and Evie vibe like from The Mummy, but it doesn't quite work, and a lot of that is because of the dialogue and banter. It just does not hit the mark. The actors are doing a good enough job with what they have, but just the script isn't all there. But the standout for me is... Samuel L. Jackson, who, after losing a bunch of his soldiers, gives zero shits about how huge and powerful Kong is, and he vows vengeance on him, which is, you know, one of those things where only somebody like Sam Jackson could have me believe that he actually is going to fight King Kong. I, I love it. He doesn't fuck around either. He's cold and ruthless through the whole film and is really engaging, probably my favorite character in the movie. John Goodman is here too, who also is always a great actor. He plays one of the early monarch scientists who always believed that these giant monsters existed, and he led the expedition here to prove it. And then you have John C. Riley, who, depending on how open you are to the premise of this movie, will make or break it for you, because... He plays a soldier that has been stranded here on this island since the 1940s, so he's been trapped for nearly 30 years. He's made friends with the natives here on the island, but he's kooky as all hell from being stranded here. On the one hand, it makes sense that if he's been trapped here for decades that he would be like this, but his comic relief in the movie is going to work for some, and it's going to be kind of cringy to other people. Just depends on how you vibe with it. But the real draw here is, of course... Kong, and the monster fights therein, of which they are great. Instead of doing the standard Kong versus the T-Rex that we've seen in countless other Kong movies, this film invents a brand new enemy for Kong with the Skull Crawlers, these giant Komodo dragon-looking things with a skull-like head, of which Kong is usually good at taking them out, but when a giant one is released towards the end of the film, it's an all-out brawl, and they have some really creative ideas when it comes to the fights. Oh, also, I have to mention this scene where a soldier named Cole goes to sacrifice himself with a grenade to kill the skull crawler, only to have the crawler smack him away into a mountain, and then he just blows up. I'm sorry, I know some people hate this moment, but I think this is one of the funniest dark humor moments that I've ever seen in a monster movie, and I laugh every single time. <laughs> But yes, the final battle between Kong and the Skullcrawler is awesome. Kong using a bunch of the surrounding items like weapons, like the tree or the boat rudders, taking advantage of the kind of stuff that you couldn't do much of back in the golden era of kaiju films, but now with CGI is extremely useful for. Is the movie over the top? Absolutely. Is the movie cheesy? Yeah, sure. Are the characters great? I mean, not really. But... It's an incredibly entertaining and fun movie that is a bit of breath of fresh air after both Godzilla 2014 maybe didn't quite hit the levels that people wanted it to, and just for the King Kong franchise in general that did a lot of the same stuff. Here they were able to let loose and do something brand new with the character, as well as now setting the stage for an iconic eventual meeting between Kong and Godzilla. But this film in particular is all about Kong. It all takes place on the island, they build up Kong really well, Kong has some great sequences, and it stays true to that classic monster movie formula. So anyways guys, this is all an attempt for me to review all of the MonsterVerse films before Godzilla Kong The New Empire comes out. So let me know what you guys thought about Kong Skull Island. I've heard very mixed things about this movie. I've heard some people say this is the best film in the MonsterVerse, and some people say it's the worst. When I put up a poll about what is the best MonsterVerse film so far that's been released, this one actually had the least amount of votes. I wonder if that's because this one doesn't have Godzilla, which I can understand, but I think as its own movie, this is a really good one, and actually very rewatchable for me. Anyways guys, let me know what you think. Also, if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up and a comment because it will help it out in the algorithm. The videos need the push right now, channel's not doing so hot, so I'd love it if you got this out there to other kaiju fans and let them know that my channel exists and I love these kind of movies so let's talk about them anyways guys thanks for watching this video I do appreciate it I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time